Hello there, I'm Eric Renault, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop. In this video, I'll be putting text on a circular path in Photoshop Elements. Now, I've already done this in Photoshop, and it's slightly different in Photoshop Elements. There should be a link if you're using Photoshop on the screen somewhere. If not, come join me in Photoshop Elements. Here we are then, I've got my circles all set up and I just want to put some text in that larger green area. Now, a little bit of setup, first of all, I need to find the dead center of this. I know my circles are central to the image, so I can go to View and New Guide and choose 50% on the vertical and click OK. And then do the same again, New Guide, this time on the horizontal, 50%. And now I know exactly where the dead center is. Right, let's go and draw out a shape to put my text onto. And it's hidden underneath the type icon here. So you can see I've got horizontal type tool. If I click on that, you'll see that some other icons come up at the bottom of the screen. Now the one I'm after is this one here. It says text on a shape tool. Now in Photoshop Elements, it's text on a shape in Photoshop itself we say on a path so if i say on a path i mean the shape if i say a shape i mean a path depending on which one you're using let's click on that now i get a choice of shapes to use i can use the rectangle the rounded rectangle the ellipse or the polygon and then you see i've got some other shapes down here as well should i wish but the ellipse is what i'm after so let's click on that one and let's go up into my image and i know that I this dead center so i can start drawing from there so I'm going to click down on the mouse and start drawing out. And sure enough, I have my path or my shape uh, already drawing out. But I can just sort of very easily draw this wherever I want, which isn't what I want here at all. I want to be drawing from the middle, so I'm going to add Alt into this. So that's going to draw from the middle and then Shift as well to constrain it to a circle. So I've got Shift, I've got Alt, and I've got the mouse key all pressed down together. And I'm constraining, I'm drawing from the middle. There we go, I've got my path there. And I know that having a little bit of a play around earlier on, I want my path to be about there. So I'm going to let go of the mouse button first, and then I can let go of Alt and Shift. And there's my shape or path already laid out. I'm going to go to View, and then Clear Guides. We don't need those anymore. Okay, let's add some type in here. You see that I've got a cross as my icon here, as my pointer. If I go over to the path, you'll see that it changes to this text tool with a wavy line going through it, meaning you're about to type on a path or on a shape in this case. I'm gonna click down there and I get my blinking, flashing icon there just to let me know you're about to type just here. So let's type in Photoshop Elements. Here we go. And it's not quite in the right place. I'd like this to go over the top of the, the, the circle here. But I can change the color of that, no problem. And I can change the position of this, no problem. But I need the black arrow to change the position. So if I click on it once, it accepts that I've just done the typing. And then I click on it again, and I'm now in my black arrow tool. I could also, of course, have clicked on the tick at the very bottom of my text to accept it and then gone to the black arrow. But two clicks on the black arrow does the job. Now when I go back onto my text, you'll see that I, my cursor changes again to this text icon with two black arrows. And this means you can scooch the text around. I use the term scooch. I don't know if that's the proper thing, but I'm going to use it. So let's scooch this and I can scooch it around. And I get these nice little uh, upward facing lines here just to see that I'm going in the middle. There we go. I'm all done. Easy as that. Let's change the color, double click on it. And then in the color down the bottom here, I can put this to an off white. That's a bit better. Good. And click off the layer. So that's that one done, but now I need the word tutorial underneath, but it needs to be the other way up. And that's where it starts getting a bit tricky here in Photoshop Elements. I'm going to choose the layer that I just created. And now I'm going to press Command or Control and J. That's Command J on a Mac, Control J on a PC. 
I've got a copy of that layer. Now what I want to do is to make this bigger and I'm going to press Command T on a Mac, that's Control T on a PC, and you see that I get this bounding box. Down the bottom I've made sure that Constrained Proportions is now ticked, that's now going to do the job of the Shift key, so that saves me stretching my fingers across. But I do still want to press my Alt key to transform from the middle, get hold of a corner and click and drag out. And what I'm looking for is to make that circle just touch as many of the tops of the other text as I can. That's not always going to work terribly well. You can see on the M there, there's a little bit poking out, just by the way it's curved. But I can get it pretty much spot on. Okay, stop clicking, let go of Alt, and then click the tick to accept that. And there we have a copy of our Photoshop elements. Let's uh, double click on it. Let's change the color. I'm going to change this to a pastel green color. And now I'm going to change the text to read tutorials. Tutorial. Or tutorial. Let's try that again. Double click. Tutorial. There we go. And let's click the tick. And go and get our black arrow again. I only needed one click this time because I clicked the tick. Back onto the text and I get my scooch tool. And let's scooch that all the way around down to the bottom. Photoshop very kindly scrolls the image for me. And there we have it. We're in about in the right place. You can see I've got that vertical line there telling me that I'm in the middle. But it's upside down. But that's okay. All I've got to do is bring my cursor here up into the circle and it's going to flip the text for me. There we go. Easy as that. Stop clicking. And there we have it. Now at this point in Photoshop I might use what's called kerning and that will put gaps in between all the different letters. We don't have that here in Photoshop Elements but we can simulate it. So again I'm going to double click on the layer here and I can just go along and put a space in between all the different letters. And in this one it works reasonably well but there may be times when there's just too much of a gap. For example here between the I and the A that's a space and it's using the point size from my text. So I could come down and change that to half the size, a 12. Again, here, that's a bit too big. Let's change that one to a 12 maybe. That's good and that's looking a lot better. Let's click the tick to accept that. So there we are. All we need to do now is just to put on a few finishing touches, maybe a drop shadow, something like that. And we have our text on a circular path even if it is two paths, but who's to tell? There we go, I'm Eric Rano. Thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget to join us at tipsquirrel.com where you'll find all kinds of free tutorials and articles. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.